Hey everyone, uh, so we're going to do a pretty simple video today, pretty simple tutorial, uh, but this is something that's going to be pretty useful for a lot of people. So uh, if you have widgets in your game, which you undoubtedly will, uh, one of the things you'll want to be able to do is to close them, and the easiest way to do that is to have a button that contains that functionality that you then just attach to every widget that you make. Uh, and so that's what we're gonna that's what we're going to do right now, so let's jump into it. So the first thing that we're going to need is a widget. So we're going to go right click in our content folder and go user interface, widget blueprint, user widget. And I'm going to call this uh, close button tutorial. Uh, close button widget. Sure. Um, so let's open this up. And in here, uh, if you're in Unreal Engine 4, you may need to delete I think it adds a canvas panel by default here in the hierarchy. Just delete that because the only thing that we want in here is a button. So we're going to search for button, drag in a button, and let's give that a name. We'll call it close button. And you want to, I see it's already ticked, but you want to make sure that up here in the top right hand corner that that button is selected as, uh, as is, has is variable enabled. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create um, an image for the button. Now, if you don't have artwork, you can just find some, you can make some, uh, you know, uh, or you can just use sort of tints. That's also fine. Uh, I'm going to be using some images that uh, are part of a set that I purchased for the game I'm working on from ArtStation. And those are these two sort of X looking icons here. So I'm going to, I'm going to drag the darker one here into the normal style appearance on the right. I'll drag the lighter one into the hovered and the darker one into the pressed. And then I'm going to go through and change the image size for all of these to 32 by 32 pixels because that's about how large I want the button to be. And up here in the top right, just change from fill screen to desired on screen and that will show you uh, the widget at its correct scale. Now, if I zoom in on this, it has this sort of rounded border, um, which is really annoying by default. Um, we don't want that because it's going to sort of cover up a bunch of the a bunch of the stuff that, uh, or a bunch of the the image that we're using as the brush for this widget. Um, so down here under Draw As, where it says Rounded Box, um, we're going to change that from. I'm not sure why this is the default, uh, but we're going to change it to Image. Uh, so we'll go here, change it to Image for all three of these and then you will see that it draws the, the button image correctly. Uh, so let's compile and save that. And that is the first step of our button. So the next thing that we need to do is work on some of the actual functionality th for the button, uh, which, is pretty, which is pretty straightforward, but uh, can be a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna explain one thing that's sort of fairly important as to how that works. Uh, so down here under the events with the button selected, we're gonna go to where it says on clicked, and we're going to select this to bind an event to that to that on clicked. So when we click the button, we can we can execute some some functionality, and then we can just delete all of these other all of these other events because we don't need the tick and we don't need the construct. So in here, we're going to add a new function, and we're going to call that function close widget. And the reason we're doing that is because we could just put all of the code in sort of here in the event graph. Uh, however, if we do it this way, uh, it'll be, I mean, first of all, it'll be a little bit cleaner, but secondly, and more importantly, uh, you can execute this function from outside of this widget. So say, for example, you take the button and you put it on a widget, um, but you want to actually be able to exit the widget uh, from some means other than just clicking on the close button. So you have an escape button, uh, you know, you might want the escape button to also close the widget or something like that. Uh, what you can do is you can you can say uh, you know on that on that parent widget you can say get and then get the close button and then from the close buttons reference execute its close widget function uh, so that's the sort of the main reason that we're doing it this way so we'll grab that function here in the event graph and just hook it up to on click so that when we click the button it executes what's inside of this inside of this function. So inside of here on close widget, what we're going to do is we're going to add a sequence node first, and we want to do two things here. Um, so the first one is we're going to go get parent, 
and there I assume has to be a better way of doing this but I haven't found it yet anyways um, but uh, what this is going to do is it's going to it says here gets the parent widget um, what I found is that that is not necessarily what is returned here um, so if you attach this widget to another another widget so say you've got a close button on like an inventory window or something it'll actually return the uh, it'll return here if we go to the to the designer you can see here on the left we've got like this tree of all of the contents of the widget it'll actually return those so if you have for example this button is attached to like a border uh, it'll return the border rather than the parent widget that it's attached to anyways so i'm going to do get outer and then i'm going to do another get outer and then I'm going to do a uh, cast. So we're going to cast this to a user widget. And I'll explain what this is doing because I know that that is a little bit confusing. Um, so I have a pre-built version of this over here. I uh, don't actually need the set function, the set, uh, but that's okay. Um, what we're going to do is toggle the breakpoint here so we can see what's happening here. So this is on my uh, map widget. So if I play, actually it's on every widget, but uh, let's close the map widget here so that we can trigger this trigger this breakpoint. You'll see from this get parent, uh, the close button is attached to the map widget. Um, but what it's returning, if you look here, it's actually returning the canvas panel that it's attached to, not the map widget parent. Uh, and that's the reason that we use this get outer. So uh, the first get outer is returning the parent of that canvas panel, which is the widget tree, so the tree hierarchy. And then the second one is returning the parent of the widget tree hierarchy, which is the widget itself. Uh, so we have the, it's a little bit confusing, but the object that the close button is attached to, and then the tree, the tree hierarchy, and then the parent widget itself. So it's the get parent and then get outer, get outer, and then that object reference is going to be um, the widget of interest. And you can always check this by toggling a breakpoint and just hovering over what these return values are if you're unsure uh, you know about the references that that this is returning if for some reason your close button is is not working So we're getting the parent and then the tree hierarchy and then the parent of that tree hierarchy Which is the widget that our close button will be embedded in or attached to and then what we want to do is cast to user widget and essentially what this is saying is is that parent widget uh, the parent of the hierarchy tree of the widget that our close button is attached to, is it a user widget? And if it is, then we want to execute some code. And what we want to do uh, as that user widget is we want to remove from parent, uh, which is going to remove it from the viewport. And that's it for this step. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to add on this then one one more step because it's good for the close button to own this functionality uh, which is when you show a widget oftentimes you will have the mouse cursor showing um, and it's good to instead of having that owned or uh, sort of hiding that that mouse uh, mouse cursor owned by every single widget so you have to code it every time you make a new parent widget class um, it's good if the button can just do that so off of this then then zero we are going to uh, we are going to do that so we're gonna right click and we're gonna get player controller we want to get whichever player controller we are interested in this is a single player game so index zero is fine and then we're going to uh, set show mouse cursor to false and we'll just execute that off of this off of this then one pin all right so let's test this out so i have a testing map here which we will use this on it currently has no close button but it does have like a bunch of borders and border medals and stuff um, and so this you can see is this this hierarchy tree and then this hierarchy tree is owned by the map widget uh, and so we're going to put this close button inside of this map widget. So I'm just going to drag it. And actually, I want to 
drag it here onto this border. There we go. And set the alignment to 0.5, uh, not to 0.5, to 1. And one thing I also want to do is set the size so that it matches the size of the icon. So 32 by 32 and anchor it in the top right corner. And then reset this position. Now you can see it's up here, um, but it's underneath a whole bunch of other stuff. This is another thing that's useful if you're not you know, used to working with widgets a lot. Just click this and drag it down to the bottom of the list. Uh, and that will that will change the draw order. So essentially the ones that are on top will be drawn first. And you want this to be drawn last so that it will be on top of everything else. So we'll select the button and uh, I already ha I have this big thick border here. Uh, you may not have this, but for me I do. So I'm going to I'm going to offset it um, by the thickness of my border, which is 15 pixels uh, in X and Y, and then compile and save. And now we have now we have this button here in the top right hand corner, uh, and it has that it has that functionality that we want to close the widget. All right, so let's test out this close button. So we're going to open up that widget. Uh, the map widget here and then in the top right button you can see we have our close button that we added if you hover over it It's changing color um, As it should be and then if I select it It will execute that that close functionality. So there we go uh, a little confusing because of the double get outer objects that are required to make this work um, But pretty straightforward once you sort of have it set up and understand it. So hopefully that's useful for you uh, until next time uh, that's, uh, that's it for now